the intermediate value theorem, and root finding using bisection. Our task in this video is to show that the function f of x equals x cubed plus 3x minus 2 has a root on the interval 0, 1, and then to use the bisection method to estimate the value of that root within 0 0.04. To accomplish this, we will need a theorem called the intermediate value theorem. And what it says is, if f of x is a continuous function on the closed interval a, b, with f of a not equal to f of b, and r is any value between f of a and f of b, then someplace on that interval there is a number c where the function value is that value r. Now what's important about that for this particular exercise is that if either f of a or f of b is negative and the other is positive, then zero is between every positive and negative number, so there is a root of f of x on the interval a, b as pictured in the diagram. So that's what we're going to do. First, show that the function f of x equals x cubed plus 3x minus 2 has a root on the interval 0, 1. We compute f of 0, which is 0 plus 0 minus 2, or minus 2, which we know is less than 0. f of 1 is 1 cubed plus 3 minus 2, which is 2, which is greater than 0. And since one endpoint has a positive value, the other endpoint has a negative value, that means that someplace in between the function value must be 0 by the intermediate value theorem. So there is some value between 0 and 1 where the function value is 0. The second task is to find the value of that root within point 0, 0.04. Now the original interval was 0, 1, and f of 0 was less than 0, and f of 1 was bigger than 0. Now the reason this is called the bisection method is we're going to cut that interval in half. So we find the midpoint, which is 0 plus 1 over 2, or 0.5 and we compute the function value, which turns out to be minus 0.4875. And the only thing that's important about that is that's a negative number. We note that f of 1 is a positive number, which means that between 0.5 and 1, there must be a place where the function is 0. Okay, And that means now our interval, which used to be 0, 1, has been replaced by the interval 0.51. So our first subinterval is 0.5 to 1, and the left-hand endpoint is negative, the right-hand endpoint is positive. So we bisect again, and the midpoint is 0.75, and I won't bother with the computation. The only thing that's important is when you plug 0.75 into the function, you get something bigger than 0. We note that at 0.5, the function is less than 0. So guess what? We've got a new interval, 0.5 to 0.75, where at, F, at 0.5, the function's negative. At 0.75, the function's positive. There's a root in there someplace. Guess what? We do it again. We compute the midpoint of that interval, which is 0.625. We calculate the function value there, and it's bigger than 0. We notice that. At 0.5, it's less than 0. So between the two of them, we've got a root. So our third subinterval is 0.5 to 0.625, with the left-hand endpoint being negative, the right-hand endpoint being positive. We bisect again, 0.5625, and the function value there is less than 0. We note that it's positive at 0.625, so we've got a new interval, 0.5. 5625 to 0.625, where the left hand bone point is negative, the right hand end point is positive, so there is a root someplace in that interval. Now, you might think we would keep doing this forever, and we would if we really wanted to be accurate, but remember we want this thing to be just within 0 0.04 of the answer. So we notice that the interval has length 0.625 minus 
0.5625, which is 0.0625, which is less than 0 0.08, which means that the midpoint is within 0 0.04 of everything in the interval. The root is in the interval, thus the root is within 0 0.04 of the midpoint. So we will take the midpoint to be our estimate, 0.625, da 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 and we've got this number 0.59375, which is the midpoint of this last interval. That's what we're going to take as our estimate. What's important here is you can pro program the bisection method. Nobody does this by hand for any length of time. And when I use such a program, 40 iterations produced an estimate good to 10 decimal places. C equals 0.059607163830. You can use this to get as good an estimate as you need. So it's actually a pretty powerful method.